All right, so we're gonna be doing a small painting demo. Uh, these are ones that I like to do when I just don't have a lot of time to um, paint. And so I like to cut my own boards. And this one I believe is a uh, five or six by six, but just something small, uh, just to do small studies. I find it really good um, to use from there. Um, it's a lot of fun. So we're, we're gonna just do a study of long boards here and have some fun. And hopefully I've got a glove in here. I was, I got some gloves in here. Nope, no gloves. glove in here somewhere. Can you check my um, bag? Oh, uh, no, my jacket in the driver's seat. Yeah, for the glove. I'll probably put it there. That's the problem when you're painting a lot is that sometimes you think you have materials and you don't. So, Anyways, for those on Facebook, uh, I've decided to do a live stream and throw caution to the wind. So we'll, I don't know how long this will be. This could be either really long or really short. But I hope you guys are having fun. There you go. Uh, yeah, did you find some? Yep. All right, good. Perfect. Why don't you find? So whenever you're painting, I always recommend that you use some kind of glove. Uh, whether, just make sure that you check to make sure that you're not allergic. Uh, I'd recommend the nitro ones versus the, uh, yeah, I recommend the nitro ones versus the, the uh, latex one because some people seem to have gotten allergic reactions over the years of using the latex ones, which can be really a drag. There we go, now that I've got nitro gloves. And so, there we go. So for here, everybody has different approaches to this painting. Um, some like to plan it out, some like to sketch it out, uh, do small studies. Um, but I like the, the, uh, caution to the wind so to speak and just throwing paint down and seeing what happens uh, if it's too planned out then it just feels too tight uh, there are definitely times to do that but for this one I don't want to I just want to have a little bit of fun and so I'm gonna go ahead and make some marks and that's all this really is is about making marks and I got a different brush than I normally use so we're just see what happens with this. Yeah, I I like to play with different brushes. Sometimes uh, I find that new ones work, and sometimes different brushes put you in a uh, take you out of your comfort zone, so to speak, because they're different. And so it's an experiment of, hey, how does this react? versus the predictability of something that you're used to getting and of course always squint you can't see me squinting but i i trust me you i'm squinting always squint the reason that you try to squint is so that you just see the simple shapes and you don't get caught up in the details and if you even with these small paintings sometimes using a brig brush can help because then it keeps you from getting locked into details as well. So I like to use shadows to kind of help guide where the drawing is going to be. So I kind of the shadows are my guide to the perspective.
and sometimes it got really dark and then sometimes like this time I'm using a lighter a yellow ochre this time So for everybody watching, I really appreciate it. And we have Coastal Virginia Plain Air event. And that will be this Sunday down the street at Cova Coffee. It'll be an outdoor event. And so it'll be fun and safe to go to. Check out a lot of different artists there, myself included, if I make it on time. <laughs> So just playing around, just getting some shapes here. So just some plumb lines, just to make sure that I got what I want. Right. And as far as my medium, for those that might have questions about a medium, I use Gamsol, uh, especially when painting outside. It just makes it a very good way to break down paints as well as it does well in sunlight, although it will dry fast, but it, for the most part, does okay. Now, one thing in these small studies is that you don't have to put everything in. You can kind of omit things. I think some people kind of get hung up and putting everything in and it's okay especially with doing these small studies just to paint what you're really focusing on you don't feel like you have to paint every little nook and cranny so I think I'm gonna leave one of those boats out just for, for depth and allow me to get a little bit more depth there sometimes I like to go straight into color and this time I feel like eh, I may just block in a little bit first just so that I feel like I've got a handle on my composition or at least something fun and that's the fun thing about doing these small studies they don't have to be perfect these are studies but these are immensely helpful when trying to uh, either practice or just play around or you know if you're just learning to paint there's nothing wrong with just playing around in fact that's the best way to learn is just to play there we go I think I've got what I want right there yeah that'll work uh, just to lay down real quick kind of like a because it's so high on the chroma for the building and everything like that. I don't want to have anything dark just yet. Sometimes I paint dark to light and then sometimes I paint, uh, how would you say it? I, I like to be unpredictable even for myself. So I don't always have a method, so to speak. I just sometimes like let things happen, which is fun. And then sometimes you come home with a disaster, but that's okay because it's all part of the learning process. I think I like that. All right. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a little bit of a yellow wash on that sky, just a little bit. So for those that are on Facebook, uh, the colors that I'm using today are titanium white. I've got a cad yellow light. I have a, so a, I wanna say it's a cad yellow medium as well. I'm gonna put a little bit of that. I've lost a label on this guy. There's no more label. Um, I wanna say this was a Lucas paints, but. I don't have a label anymore. Oh yeah, here we go. 
Um, it's all in foreign languages, so I can't read. We'll just assume that it's a cat and yellow moon. Um, so from cad yellow medium, yellow ochre, cad yellow, uh, cad orange, cad red light, uh, illusory crimson, and uh, transparent red oxide, a, a uh, ultramarine blue, and a phthalo turquoise. So, That's an interesting choice. Yeah, so those are the ones that I like to use for now. They can change. I don't like to be married to paints, but it, it's, it's on adventure, so to speak. See if I can get a little bit of it. Now, one of the things that I like to do at times is use a brayer. And for those that are wondering, what is a brayer? This is a brayer. And a brayer can be a way to put some tone in quickly. And so that's what I'm doing right now is not be precious with these small little paintings that's the one thing is don't be precious with them just get them down and get it going speaking of get it going i better get it going <laughs> there you go so and the board that i'm using is just a masonite board that i've primed with um just a your run-of-the-mill primer uh, I believe this one is Jerry's Ultra uh, something, Sp Ultra Special Prime. I'm not sure what, they had something special on it, so. But it's actually really good. I, the first time I was using it, and I, I have to say I really enjoyed how quickly I could uh, cover with it, so. so. There we go, just a little bit of a base. We have such pretty skies. Isn't it? Yeah, we do. We have some really, really pretty skies. Really pretty skies. So that's kind of where I'm going to work on next is just these pretty skies. Like I said, uh, this is just a sable uh, hog's hair. Haven't really used it before until today. <laughs> so this brush is getting its first workout, so to speak. There we go. And if you're wondering on Facebook what that sound is, that sound happens to be um, helicopters were near a Navy base. So. Alright. So once again, just laying down some colors on the sky. Mixing a little bit of white with that turquoise uh, phthalo. That's why I kind of like it. It just does a really good job of allowing to make for a light blue. I don't have that luck with um, the ultramarine. Not without a lot of work. Not without a lot of work. Start introducing a little bit lighter. Hey, welcome. All right, so we're putting this down. Once again, just marking in the sky a little bit. And I don't always start with the sky, but this time I did. 
I think it's the fun thing about painting is, is that sometimes it's fun, especially with these small studies, to try different ways. Uh, some people like to paint the skies first and some people like to do their foreground first. It's all just personal preference, really. And as far as for those that want to know what kind of paint I'm using, gambling, uh, I have a couple others. Like I have um, mostly gambling. I occasionally use Lucas uh, or <coughs> uh, Graham as well. I believe I've used that before. So they're, they're all great paints. Just, if you don't recognize the brand, that's probably a good reason not to use it. <laughs> I found that out the hard way with uh, this off-brand purple that I'm kind of a my my uh, Scottish ancestry has made me very frugal as my son will attest um, and I had some purple that I had from college and I don't think I remembered where I got it but probably because it was also more of a generic color and non name brand and darn it if it didn't ruin a painting it started to crack <laughs> literally like maybe a week after maybe a week after I, I had uh, started using it uh, or I had finished the painting and it was a really good painting too at least I thought it was and it started darn thing started to crack and uh, nothing I could do would fix it I mean it just it's still um, uh, befuddles me as far as why it started cracking but it did and so I don't buy purple paint out of a tube now uh, and it's better to mix anyway so I at least I, I believe so so all right so we're at 626 right now and as usual I've gotten a late start on this so if you were wondering where I was well, here I am And uh, squint, squint, squint. All right, what shall we use for that roof? Should we tackle the roof or we should tackle the orange out of the building? That's almost like a peach. It's not quite, not quite a peach, but kind of a peach color. But once again, with these small studies, it's okay to play off what, what you're feeling about it. So, have some fun don't be don't be uh, stuck in rules if you will especially with these small paintings it's, it's, these are the best times to experiment to play to fail because you know it's just a small painting you haven't invested a lot of time into it and but they're so educational because they, they can give you so much information as far as what works what doesn't work Trying mixing different colors. That's always fun. Try a new color scheme. Something that may work. Or not. Alright. There we go. Alright. And so marking this in. And one thing with uh, architecture that I find helpful, and maybe you'll find it helpful too, is just putting things in simple shapes and not, so as we can see here, here is a square, here's a rectangle, here's kind of a trapezoid, a triangle, and another something, <laughs> something there. But yeah, it's, it's all fun, all good stuff. When I first started doing painting, I would I would draw and I would really labor on the drawing. And then as I started doing figure drawing, I realized that uh, when I tried to do the um, painting night, that I would spend so much time on my drawing that I didn't have any time to paint. And so I started just going straight into paint with my figure drawing because you only had three hours and because you only had three hours to f complete the figure you really had to um, 
he really had to paint fast. And I think that was my journey before I started doing plein air was doing figure, I belonged to a figure drawing group and you know, that was really fun, but also really challenging. And then so I kind of had a primer, if you will, so that when I started to paint outside that I kind of had that idea that I had to paint fast, but nature has a way of humbling you when you are painting outside things you think you see suddenly change or if, if the light changes everything changes especially with um, in our area we have these tent roofs and I can tell you these tent roofs will change if you watch how that Sun changes it'll change literally the dimension and the color and temperature of these tent roofs I painted a, a, a farm um, produce stand the other day and it had a tin roof and that just changed all the time I could not <laughs> you just kind of have to say commit to something and and hope that it works now when I try a new brush sometimes I like to try to do a whole painting with that whole that brush but I, I'll probably flex a little bit here and there between it. But I find it fun because then I learn what I can and can't do with that brush. So I, I try to challenge myself with it all the time as far as what can I do with just a single brush. Just to find the limitations of it. Not, not, to, um, not to set uh, myself up for, you know, being stuck in dogma of using one brush, but just to say hey how can I push this to its limit if I had and this has happened to me uh, at this event one time uh, I got to the beach and I only had one brush and so I had to do a whole a, a whole painting with one brush and uh, I decided to go big because I couldn't at, at that time I didn't think I had it in me to do a big painting with one uh, with, on a small canvas although I think now it would have been uh, a lot of fun to try so I'm gonna squint and then I'm gonna try and figure out the colors for that roof that's kind of almost a purple I'm gonna have a little fun I'm gonna push the colors beyond what they really are just cuz it's fun um, So there's that roof is changing already just with the change of the sunlight. Okay. Yeah, there we go. All right. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah. All right. Again, just practicing and playing around, seeing what works and what doesn't. Right, and see for this darker part of the building, mix in some colors and see how this works. I don't think that works very well. There we go. Maybe a little bit more red in there. Let's see. Here. There we go. Let's try that. Cool color. And if we look at underneath it there, it's really a warmer shadow under the balcony. It's much warmer than I anticipated. I mean, when you squint, you don't really see it, but it is. It's warmer. here sometimes I find that I get caught up in details and I tend to slow down so those are tough moments so when you 
try and set yourself with a timer. I find that that helps you keep the motivation to paint fast and loose if that's your goal. If your goal is to paint in a certain timeline and, and fit, complete a painting in a certain timeline, then painting with a timer can help a lot because at that point you realize you're under the gun and it just kind of makes you work a little faster. Not always, but you know. Remember, these are just small studies. These aren't supposed to be masterpieces. All right. All right, so we have, see how the top of that building, the lower part of that tin roof, it has now become like one color, but momentarily ago, <laughs> it was two-tone. That's the maddening thing about these uh, these tin roofs. They change color so quickly. It's ridiculous. So, and that's where you just kind of have to sometimes say, I'm sticking, this is how I saw it. I'm going to stick with it. And even though it keeps changing on me, I'm going to stick with it. And hopefully if this video allows me to save, I will publish it on YouTube. So if you've missed part of this, I'm going to publish the video on YouTube as well when, when we're complete, when completed. Hopefully uh, this weekend, if time allows. And if not, it will be shortly after. And we'll just have to pay somebody in donuts to edit it for me. Right, Cole? Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right, there we go. All right. Weird how this changes. I am getting so much difference from those roofs. The, those roofs are really interesting. Darker than the sky. But as you can see here, I'm not trying to get into too much detail just yet. I'm gonna save that for later. I kind of detail is kind of like uh, how would you say um, dessert? Detail is dessert, and you got to finish your dinner before you can get to dessert. Otherwise you get you don't finish the painting so try to try to finish your dinner first before you get to the dessert otherwise you won't finish your painting Now I'm mixing a little bit of Lizard and Crimson and Ultramarine. For this painting, I'm not going to use black. I haven't used black in a while. There's nothing wrong with using black. Um, and for those that like to use black, I applaud you. <laughs> All right, and so add a little bit of color and add that other roof. Not, not quite the color I'm looking for. I don't use a palette knife to mix my, there we go. that's probably the better color. I use a brush mainly when I do plain air to mix my colors now. Occasionally I use a, a palette knife, but I find that when I use the brush, it harmoni helps harmonize my colors. So for those that mix with a palette knife, try, I'm not saying that you have to do it, but you know, try mixing with your brush and see how that works you might find that your colors might start to harmonize you know getting dirty muddy colors some of my favorite painters paint with you know what looks like complete mud if you were to isolate a particular spot of color but they they are uh, successful in making such great tones it's amazing 
are. So I do say I think the tones of this this uh, riff has been quite challenging. Quite challenging. So let's see what we can do here. I think this needs to go a little brighter. Yeah, it does. In fact, we need to start to go really bright with that roof. That roof is. If we, squint, if we squint our eyes, you can see the back side of that roof is brighter than the sky. It's brighter than the sky. Which makes painting these kind of roofs very challenging, these 10 roofs, because they, they, they're, they, they're like reflectors. You're just painting a reflector. All right. Just because I want to just see how the colors are, I don't really want to get into detail, but I'm going to do a little bit of detail with the palette knife. Just to, just to make sure I'm on the right colors here. There we go. Um, slightly, I don't know, maybe a brighter color. Yeah, but I'm gonna leave it. If I squint, they're almost merged. And then, let me go over here and get another. I like to use my palette knives from time to time because they allow me to make sharp edges. And it can be fun to get different textures with this. Because you never know what you're gonna get sometimes. Especially with architecture. Well, need, that needs to be a little bit brighter. Yeah, because if I look at that balcony, that bottom of the balcony is practically the whitest part of the painting of the subject matter. But I may just mud the colors up a little bit just because I can. Once you go pure white, you're, that's it. You're not going any further. You are you are at the threshold of the brightest color or absence of color, however you want to put it. Whoops, sorry guys, Facebook. My hat hit the um, hat hit the uh, camera there. I probably shouldn't do this. This is the crocodile hunter. I probably shouldn't do this, but I'm going to. There we go. All right. Now, I'm not gonna draw the rest of the beams yet because that's getting the detail, but I'm just trying to get the roof nailed in. looking fun all right try to a frames on here I really don't want to do that because at that point I've kind of just like blopped everything see paintings aren't perfect that's another good use of the palette knife is to scrape away excess color or to add a little bit of texture yeah, there we go. I might try that a little bit more and see how that works. There we go. It's a little bit defining. All right. Now I'm going to try and shape these. Does anybody know what they call those little windows up at the top? I have no idea in architecture what you would call those. The little dormers? Yeah. The little... These little guys that I'm painting, the top part of the, the windows, I have no idea. What are they called? Pan? Oh, oh wow. 
interesting. See, learn something new all the time. I've never known that. Again, that's a little bit of a cooler color, so I'm going to try and cool that down a little bit. Try to. That's the key. Try to cool that down a little bit. All right. And let's we'll see if that works. I don't think that works for me. So I'm going to throw a little purple in there. Lizard and crimson. Mix it in. Needs to be cooler. Not too cool, so I want to try and mud this up a little bit. Find the right color for this. Nope. Well, yeah, maybe. So if anybody has any questions, I'm, I, as you guys can see, I'm able to talk and run my mouth in pain. So if anyone has any questions, please uh, fire away. I know. It's, <laughs> it's like, what do you want to ask the headmaster? I don't know. It's so relaxing to watch you. Yeah, that's what somebody said on Facebook too. And then it needs to be darker. Just a little bit darker. Alright. There. I think that's working. Alright, so. One of the things that I've learned is that painting windows. You don't want to paint the wind. Well, I don't say you don't want to. But it's, it's always a nice idea to have vary the windows. So they're not the same color easier said than done and making it work but that way it feels a little bit more natural all right and go back to that white the mix of white there to see if i can get the edge that's a tough one i'm going to see if i can Always tough to get hard edges when you're doing a small painting like this. But we'll try. And as far as for those that work with a textured canvas, you always get a, it's a little bit more successful because you have to, more tooth on the canvas. But these are just panels that are um, painted. So. They all have their pros and cons with a light surface. And there we go. All right, so I'm gonna try and go with that darker under shadow again, because it's a warmer shadow underneath. I mean, it's cooler than what's there, but it's definitely darker. Those are always the tough parts. <laughs> keep your keep your brush steady. Keep your brush steady. That's always so hard. So hard. Don't sneeze. At least try not to sneeze. Alright, so we're putting this down. One thing you can notice is that underneath the that um, porch on the upper level, the shadow is different 
in tone than the one below it. It's darker. And that's where learning to see really comes in handy. And then sometimes you can't, you can't figure it out. You just, you're like, I don't know what I'm painting. I can't figure it out. And so sometimes it's good to fall back on something that you know, or at least some kind of light rule that you know is like, I know light does this when this happens. There. Because at least if you learn those, then you can then put those in when you can't interpret what else is going on. just a little bit of under shadow there ever so slightly there you go oh probably too much <sighs> what happens when you do too much and uh, you try to compensate with something else or and then just use your finger fingers are amazing <laughs> fingers are amazing so they help out not always. Sometimes they make a mess, but sometimes they dumb down things, detail that you just really were overworking and really help. Yeah, there we go. Oh, dumb down. All right. I think I've gotten too tight, and so now I'm going to try and bring it back in and see if I can pull this off because I feel like I'm way out of where I should be. All right. Let's see how that works. Once again, that tin roof on the apex is really tough. And you got a really tough color to try and make. Very tough. There we go. All right, and I'll try my trusty palette knife. There we go. A little bit of highlight there, and then we'll go in with a detail brush. See how this goes. We're losing light really fast and it won't be long before that sun's gone. Yeah, so I need to get rolling here. So I'm going to run out of light soon. So I need to make sure that I, I finish, but I, we'll see how it goes. All right. All right, let's see here. Okay, we have a question. Do you always paint with the sun on your canvas or on your board? I don't always paint with the sun on my uh, canvas, but I just, I, I've tried umbrellas and I just can't. Yeah, they, they make, probably. for me, I'd rather compensate mm -hmm. for the, um, I'd rather compensate for the sun mm -hmm. than to do um, underneath. I, I don't know why it is. Um, I, I don't have a reason. I know that some people can need an umbrella and they feel that it gets the best results for them. And, you know, whatever works for you, it's not a right or wrong. But yeah, it can be challenging to get, to try and get a, uh, to try and get a, um, what's it called? an accurate depiction. Mm -hmm. I mean, painting's hard enough, but I just found that with a, uh, with, oh, look at those clouds there. I'm gonna have to try and get that. That's just too good to miss. You know, sometimes 
you get things and you don't plan them, but nature just has a way of providing you something really cool that you're like, wow, that's really nice. I want to add that in and that's exactly what I want to do now. See if we can get some orange in here. I really need to go to a different brush. All right, let's try this. And change the paper towel. Sorry for the crackling on Facebook, but that's the bag. And so that's how it runs. All right, so let's see if we can get these clouds going. Getting there. Maybe a little too dark. I want to see how that goes. That's one color when, I, when I'm when i painting plain air, I seem to just tear through is uh, titanium white because it's just as such, they're using it for so much to mix. All right. Let's see how we're doing now. All right, so getting there, we're losing light fast, very fast. So we're gonna have to start adding. What is my plan for the bottom part? Uh, painting by the seat of my pants as always. Uh, that's probably the plan. Um, I think for this kind of painting, it's, it's really what is your focal point? And if your focal point is one thing, you know, don't, don't over render something that really isn't the focal point. I think that's the, the, hardest thing to do is to rein in where is your focal point and where is it not and if it's not something then you know trying to work on it there we go I almost wish I could add those f fans but there just aren't there isn't really enough room and it's just going to add too much Distraction. Oh, too much distraction. So if I can get that. Yes. A little bit of a highlight here. Oh, way too much. Way too much. Let's go ahead and kill that. got a little umbrella over there. Let's see if I can add that in. We'll add people last because that's always fun. Alright, so now Thank you. 
And we're gonna try to add some of the lower depths here. Some greens there, that's too too bright. Gotta tone it down a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to try and put a brown right on that watermark a little bit, just a little bit, rust or whatever it is that occurs. Now I feel like I've got to lighten up the sky a little bit, so we're going to get one of my other brushes. I haven't really been painting, guys, I've been just painting with these three brushes right here. So these are the three brushes that I have been painting with in palette knives, so I haven't really been doing much more than that. And we're going to lose light soon, so I better start painting, so I'm going to start loosing, loosely painting in some of these boats. And add that in there and then go to the cool tones. This is where I like this turquoise because was it the uh, Thalo turquoise. It just does a great job, especially with a little bit of lizard and crimson. Give a nice little tone of shadow. There. Sometimes brushes can, brush work can help kind of break up the um, detail. So keeps you from getting trapped into detail, so to speak. There we go. So. Adding, and I hope you guys can see we've lost the sunlight on the, the painting, but hopefully we got a little bit more to go. So yeah, I need to get a little bit of a running out of white. I've been running out of white today. I'm almost out of white. You can see that I've used almost my entire tube here. So I think I'm gonna need to get the cranker. I've got some. It's underneath my bucket. Okay. I can't be prepared. I have plenty of paint, folks. I'm not going to run out. At least not right now. Go ahead and then put in another. And I'm going to try and make this shadow a little bit lighter so that it gives variation. So using a little bit of loser and crimson to warm up this shadow here. And to try and there we go. Hey, how's it going Monica? We're doing live on Facebook. So we're live and if you have any questions feel free to ask. I'd like to know how long you've been working on this. Uh, just under an hour. Just under 50 minutes. 50 minutes. Okay, so does that mean I have 10 minutes left? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> yeah, let's work with a deadline here. That, that'll be fun. Five minutes. So that will, no. Five minutes. I have five minutes, my son tells me. 
Nothing like having a taskmaster tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Work harder, work faster. Gotta make the donuts. There we go. Nice little line in there. Mix in some greens. I don't know. I noticed that you use the sharp edge of your palette knife quite frequently. Oh yeah. It is uh it can it can it can be great, it can be awful. It just depends. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on the occasion. But I do like to use it. You're right. It helps for sharp edges because uh, I do love detail, um, especially now since it's the dessert hour. Folks, it's the dessert hour. It's time to do detail. <laughs> it's, it's it's really nice. Jack, I like it. Thank you. Let's see if we can get this done here. There's a nice little plop right there. Whoops. Yep. This is the moment of truth, folks. There we go. Now I just have to do this over and over again. There we go. It's either do or die. Let's see here. Just gonna run it all the way through. I mean, yeah, probably not the best idea, but that's okay. Now, these probably aren't evenly spaced out, but that's okay. I'm going to live with it. And yeah, they're not evenly spaced out, but that's okay. I'll live with it. All right, so let's see what brush I can use now. All right, so we got a little bit of t touching up to do from here. Sorry, guys. There you go. And then we got the long boards. Of course, we have to put long boards in here. So put a little bit of long board sign in here. And let's hope this works. There we go. Long board sign right there. And then we're gonna add a little bit of hints to the more roof on that. I don't know if I want to do a roof on there. I don't. I know there's a roof here, but I just don't want to do it. So we're going to do something else because we can. We're just going to put a little bit of a visor on here. Yeah, there we go. A hint of a visor. So just like that. For those that are knowledgeable in boats, I don't want anybody to... I don't want to... How would you say? Earn their wrath for getting the boat wrong. No, you forgot. There's something missing. Yeah, okay. So. All right, so. I'll well just add some details, but not too much on these boats because I don't want to do too, too, too much. Too much details then just really ruin the, the, ruin the painting, so to speak. All right, so let's see what else we can add here and have some fun with the details now. So this boat here can have a little bit of the awning there. Doug, what is in your jar? Uh, it's Gamsol. Okay, I was curious as to what you use. Yeah, I just use straight Gamsol. I found that when I use linseed oil uh -huh. mixed with it, it kind of gums up and then it leaks all over the place for trying to keep the... Um, when trying to keep the uh, the lid closed, I found unless you clean it really good, and I'm not the best person for staying up on cleaning my supplies, so that is why I just use straight Gamsol because that way I don't have to worry about mess. Okay. And you mix your colors as you went along? Yes, I do. I mix my colors as I go along because I feel that helps harmonize the colors. It's almost at that point you're not going to get colors that are that are clashing with each other. Well, it looks like you use a very limited palette. 
How many colors are you using? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, so yeah, I have, so once again for everybody here, just so you know, uh, we have titanium white, uh, cad yellow light, cad yellow medium, yellow ochre, orange, uh, medium orange, uh, cat, I mean cad orange, cad red light, a lizard and crimson, uh, transparent red oxide, ultramarine blue, and um, phthalo turquoise. Thank you. So... All right, so I wanna, I feel like I wanna add a little more to the sky and get it a little bit lighter because it is really just turned so much lighter than what it was. Maybe just a tint of yellow in it. Um, let me just make it a nice, juicy, chunky sky. help define that edge too. All right, and let's see here. We're just gopping paint at this point, folks. We're just slapping thick paint. see here yeah almost there and the light keeps changing as mm -hmm. always never ending never ending we were talking earlier about these 10 roofs how they are just a constant struggle for trying to capture because the the colors constantly shift as the Sun dips or clouds change so. I think that's really one of the challenges of plein air painting is how to capture your subject when it shifts so constantly with the light and the shadow. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Amen. So how, what, what's your best tip? Paint fast. <laughs> <laughs> Paint fast. And just, you know, learn and have fun. Paint small. That's why I'm, I'm doing this demo is that don't get these are these are the best way to start out painting is to paint small you know if you do a five by five or a six by six you can really attain a lot of knowledge quickly without having to really bulk down and 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 and, and struggle with a big painting i speak from experience of trying to do big paintings when i first ventured into doing painting that i, I really struggled with it it was I couldn't finish paintings and it just left me dejected but for people who want to start out with a small painting I think I really believe that you will have much more success and you may not have a, a great painting but you should be able to finish it and by finishing it you will have learned something and attained a little bit more knowledge than you had before you started that painting. Every painting is a learning opportunity. It's an opportunity to learn something new and to try something new. I don't like that fence, but I like the people, so I wanna go ahead and put some people in here. So we're gonna try to add some people. This is probably a silly question, but will you sometimes, I'm sure you probably sometimes use the small ones to then paint a large one at home? Oh, yeah. For yeah. study, sure. Yeah, sure, sure. yeah that, that painting disaster I talked about with the purple. Yeah, mm -hmm. that one, uh, that one I ended up doing a big painting for. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, so it was like me trying to get my revenge for the purple destroying that painting. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it helped out. It was great. Um, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. and I learned from it and I will never buy a purple tube <laughs> well maybe never but yeah so let's see what we can do here we've got an umbrella well, it's not an umbrella I wasn't paying attention enough it's a stand so let's see if we can mock that stand in real quick and for anybody at home or watching on Facebook Sound effects are great if you're painting by yourself. Although, if you're painting with other people, they may think you're crazy. So, but if you like to paint, you know, just 
paint small, paint fast, do these often, you'll learn so much. You really will. And that way when you tackle a big painting and you're, you, you feel confident enough, you'll do great. You'll have a great painting. And you'll have a great painting because you'll have a, such a good foundation with doing small paintings. So, Deb, what are some of the other um, like big tips that you would offer someone who wants to, to, to start painting? So, go small. Go small, paint often. Uh, have, ha try to have your gear ready at a moment's notice. That way, whenever there's a moment to paint, you're ready. You don't have to wait. You're not... Oh, it's going to take me a half hour to get everything ready. If you, if you are ready to paint at a moment's notice, then you can, you can just throw your gear in the car, go and paint, and then, you know, spend an hour. Um, before I, I, I did this demo, doing this demo here, I did a 9 by 12 and I just set myself an hour limit. And I knew I wasn't going to finish it, but I just, you know, those, those limits do help you and help you accomplish a lot. Now, one thing that I find fascinating is, is that sometimes as the light changes, things reveal themselves more. And I find that fun because sometimes, like those clouds that we did earlier, uh, they weren't there at the beginning. And so this is, you know, always fascinating to find. And there we go. That's better. And, and be willing to destroy what you've created. Don't treat your paintings like precious strokes. Be willing to destroy anything at a moment's notice because if, if you treat everything as precious, then you're not going to get, you're not gonna be able to correct mistakes that you know are, are deep in your heart are wrong to you. But you're gonna be like, oh, but this stroke was beautiful and I didn't wanna change it. And, you know, you get trapped in those. Or, you know, my grandma told me this was the greatest painting and I've ever done. And uh, I, I used to upset my grandma. She goes, why did you paint over? It was great as it was. You should have never touched it. You ruined it. If you're not afraid to ruin a painting, then you are not, you're not going to progress because you have, you have to be willing to destroy a painting. To, and, and, pursuit of making a great painting I don't know if I want to add that shadow now that actually looks pretty interesting let's go over here I see the shadow creeping across and we are really guys we're really running out of time but I see that shadow across the sidewalk and I'm like wow that actually is pretty cool and I want to do it and I'm going to do it Oh, if that's going to be the right color, but and then of course I have to go with the darker green because that's the shadow. Yeah, maybe not working, but this is exactly what I'm talking about: is seeing something that you want to capture but you may not be able to get right away. But willingness to willingness to fail that's that's it you have to be willing to fail to get yeah maybe because i'm a glutton for punishment and everybody's okay everybody feel the need to leave yet no okay um let's add some yet more detail because like i said i'm a glutton for punishment here we're gonna go ahead and add that catwalk down And this is, you know, once again, speaking to, I wouldn't be able to do this unless I had everything ready in the background. There we go. Mm -hmm. And so I'm using a palette knife here to make some marks. Yeah, and let's see here. And there we go. A little bit of a catwalk 
I'm going to have to add some other darker areas. This is the fun part for me. I love doing this. This is the dessert, so to speak. Adding the little details. Um, this is where the magic, for me, the magic painting is. It's just, just making things and finding little areas to add. Do they work? Do they not work? But you learn so much, especially in the final stages of these paintings. And I know oil paintings take so long to dry. So people are doing paintings for the show. Mm -hmm. How long does it take for them to cure? Uh, would Doug, I mean, I'm sure to cure. That That's a great question. So for those on Facebook, the question was uh, for people who are buying paintings, hey, I bought this painting and it's wet. What do I do? Uh, well, hopefully that painting is in a frame, first and foremost. Uh, as far as these paintings, if they're plein air, because they're plein air and because they've been out, usually they dry within to tack within a few days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but that depends on the artist. That's not always the case. There are going to be uh, some that have used different mediums that will slow the drying process. So I would say is it's always a good rule of thumb to ask the artist mm -hmm. what their experience for each one. So my paintings uh, can take anywhere from a couple days to about seven days to dry, to tack. Uh, you're still gonna have a painting that cures and it's always good to ask the artist later on if um, they're uh, nearby to say, hey, my painting should be dry uh, what about a varnish? And that's where you can then ask if the art artist is, you know, willing to varnish for you. Look at that golden hour. This is so, that beautiful? pop. And it's like, I feel like I need to add more pop. As, uh, what is it, that um, SNL Christopher Walken character. I need more cowbell. I need more cowbell. Definitely. Add a little bit more yellow. There we go. Let's we'll see if we can get this to work. Yeah, warm it up. But I've even heard that oil paintings can take six months to dry. Yes. Uh, I mean to cure. Yes. To cure. Yes. Okay. And they they could uh, and they can take longer. Uh, but I would say is that for the most part, I would look at talking to the artist and getting their recommendations because um, any painter appreciates a collector wanting to know how to best preserve their painting uh, and a lot of paintings um, don't have a coat of varnish and it doesn't mean that you can't get a coat of varnish later mm -hmm. but it's always good to let it cure first before you mm -hmm put a coat of varnish on it um, and unless you're experienced with it it's probably not the best idea to do it yourself uh -huh. um, because well need needless to say we've all seen uh, what happens when people decide to take it upon themselves to uh, improve artwork <laughs> uh, hence the uh, painting in Spain I can't remember the name of that church, but that lady decided to repaint, uh, retouch the face of Christ. And... <laughs> yes. But um, it's always good to uh, it's always good to have a good conversation with the artist mm -hmm. because it shows that you care about the painting and that you you, you really want to have preserve that painting and and keep it out. So as we can see here, I've, I've popped that. Yep painting that little color there and oops I missed the spot right there do most oil painters varnish um I think that 
sometimes the paintings sell and you don't have that time to varnish. So yeah. it really is upon the collector if they want to uh, pursue varnishing. Now, some painters uh, have a great relationship with their clients and they, they live close by mm -hmm. uh, with these plein air events. That's not always available. Yeah. It's not, how would you say? The intent is we would love to, but you know, if I'm in Virginia and someone is in Michigan, it, it's kind of hard to say, hey, let me drop by and just throw a, a slap of coat of varnish on there for you. Because a lot of artists will do that because, you know, they value the collector and, and, and appreciate the collector trying to keep the painting uh, protected. So that I hope that answers okay. probably a little bit long winded, but oh, yes. no, very, very you know. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You've done that for us, Doug. You've varnished <laughs> paintings that we bought from you. Yeah. And speaking of which, is there any others that I've missed or we are we all up to date? <laughs> there no. are some that I need to be done? Probably. Okay. Well, just let me know. See? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Here we go. Prime <laughs> example. All right. So I'm going to try and touch up there so you can see some of the paint dripped. And as you can see here, there's a little bit of a variance on that back end now. It's not so bright. So I'm probably going to try to make up a little bit of adjustment on that then. Yeah, that's almost like a fade. And this is so fun. Oh, look at that. Look at the colors in there. Let's punch up this clouds now because they are really starting to really looking beautiful and let's throw a little bit of lizard and crimson or cad red light I think of where I swear I'm gonna go with that we'll see if I can get that to pop yeah there we go Yeah, looking really great. Fun. This is the great thing about painting versus fishing is you always come home with something. It may not be great, but at least you're coming home with something, right? Mm, I've been fishing and it's no fun coming home with nothing. You spend eight hours on the water and you didn't even catch a fish. It's like, man, how did that happen? But it does. I'm, uh, I'm probably overworking this a little bit, but I'm just having fun. So, and this is a demo. So there we go. We can we can we can do that. So one thing that I like to talk about is this is where nature really helps. Is that if you look at these clouds, they're darker on the left side. So I'm gonna, for Facebook, it's darker here than it is here. And I know you guys can't see it on Facebook, but um, if you look at the cloud, it's cause the sun is on this side, but so there's a little bit of darker shadows on there, not by much, but it's tricky to not overdo it just ever so slightly. And that's the thing about nature is, is if you spend enough time there's so much you can learn about color just by watching. Mm -hmm. I mean, books are awesome and they're the best way to get a jump start. Okay. Because sometimes what you see, you can't, you don't understand. At least I don't understand. Some people can figure stuff out, but sometimes I need somebody great to kind of help explain why I'm seeing what I'm seeing. And now even the whites are getting... Yeah. Let's see if I can. I'm not happy with that. And I need to figure something out. I'm not happy with that at all. That little window on the side there needs to go. I don't know if I can get it. I'm going to try, but I can't seem to get that light there. That just that little bit of a bang there. That's what I wanted. Now I can do a little bit of the overhang. Mm 
Minuten. So, and then sometimes as you see the light fade, it can help you see things change enough to say, oh, I can make this change now, like here. Whereas before it was really hard to make that definition. Now I can kind of do it. This is such a weird architecture, strange, but fun, because it doesn't really, it's not like your typical A-frame house. I don't know that's just so weird I just I haven't I think that's kind of the challenge on some of these is like you see this kind of architecture is like wow this is really bizarre in a way that just you wouldn't think that somebody would make a house or architecture with that but there we go and now I'm getting really overly into detail but I just feel like everybody's enjoying this. So I'm just gonna keep going until we run out of light. So the battery hasn't run out guys. <laughs> We're running until this phone runs out of battery. And I don't know if I really wanna see what else I can do here without makeup. I see, there's always something. And the thing is, is that when you do paintings, if you don't get to finish something where you get home and you don't see you see something change that's okay you can you can paint it from mem try painting it from memory you know if you can't if you say oh i forgot a pole paint it from memory try to you know develop that that memory of how it was because those that's always fun um i mean photos are great too but I like to do from memory when I can, if I forget something, it's like, how did it look? And then I try to use my memory to evoke that emotion versus being, a, uh, being uh, beholden to a photo. And then sometimes those photos steer you too far because then you're like, well, I have the photo now. I can touch this up and I can touch that up. And next thing you know, you've got a completely different painting than what you started with on plain air. because I feel like uh, I may add one other thing here mm, let's see here I think that will do this we are almost done here now let's see here if I can add just a little bit more thanks everybody for going over time I know my son said I was holding to an hour but I'm buying him dinner so he can he's a good sport about it right yep yep there you go free dinner that's a growing boy for you just tell him free dinner and they're gonna do it for you yeah I don't know see here's the this is kind of what I want to point out sometimes you add too much and I feel like I've added too much on here so what do you do in those cases well my friend the pellet knife has a great way of just and then and just a little bit more see it never existed so never be afraid to add something just to see how it looks and then if you don't like it paint it out so um all right well i think this is done for the most part um i probably spent more time on it than i normally would on these size paintings but you know it's a demo and i'm not so there we go it's my demo i can do what i want you can. thank you doug well, thank